Good evening, everyone. Jimmy Gwetch, Peter, for your, your, your wonderful, your good words and your blessing. Uh, welcome to uh, family and friends from near and far. Uh, on behalf of the Chief and Council of Kitigan CB, I'd also uh, like to extend to you all a warm welcome to unceded Anishinaabeg Algonquin Territory. From all four directions, east to west, north to south, we, the Anishinaabe people, as stewards of Turtle Island, have been here since time immemorial. I'd like to acknowledge and say miigwech to our ancestors. They have carved a path and left us with a beautiful legacy we honor. Graduates, in the work that you will do, you will be privileged to this rich history. Our ancestors' presence is felt everywhere on this vast landscape. For my people, the Algonquin Nation, our history is very much connected to the Ottawa River, and uh, we, we traditionally call this uh, Kitchisibi. This river was our highway and birch bark canoes were our, uh, was our mode of uh, transportation. Outside on these shores and other shores, our ancestors built lodges, camped, performed st uh, ceremonies, told stories, traded, and were buried along these riverbanks and shores of our territory. The Algonquin Nation uh, consists of uh, 11 communities, uh, two in Ontario and um, nine in Quebec. So uh, Kitagan CB, for those of you who do not know, is just about an hour and a half drive north of here. Uh, congratulations to the Museum of History and its RBC Aboriginal Training Program in Museum Practices for today's 25th uh, graduation ceremony. Vanessa Cake, you are the fourth, I, I believe, uh, uh, graduate from Kitagan ZB of this program. Congratulations. Uh, Congratulations all to, uh, also to Andrea and Adrian. Your families must be very proud. And um, with your newly acquired training, I'm sure you will accomplish great things uh, wherever you decide to work. Congratulations and all the best. Bonsoir, mesdames et messieurs, distingués années, chefs et invités. Ladies and gentlemen, elders, chiefs, those of you who are graduating this evening and alumni who are with us this evening, we're delighted to have you here this evening. J'ai le grand plaisir de vous souhaiter la bienvenue à la 25e cérémonie de remise des diplômes du programme de formation en pratique muséale destinée aux autochtones. We're privileged to have elder and firekeeper Peter de Conti and Ms. Alice Baudouin member of the Band Council from Kitigan, ZB Anishinaabeg First Nation here with us tonight. Thank you very much both for coming and honoring us by speaking and blessing us, Elder De Conti. We also have Carolyn Dromagay, the Director General of the Canadian War Museum, our sister institution, and John McAvity, the Executive Director of the Canadian Museums Association with us this evening. And although he was unable to be here this evening, Douglas Cardinal did ask me to send you his greetings. For those of you who've not been here before, and I know some of you haven't, you were in the room that Doug designed. Uh, this is uh, the most important room, in my opinion, in Canada. And as Alice Baudouin said, the museum faces the highway, the river, and that was Doug's vision for this great museum, this grand hall, and we're delighted to have you here, and there could be no more fitting place to honor you than in the grand hall this evening. I'd like to extend a very special welcome to this year's interns and their families on the 25th anniversary of the program, the silver anniversary of this program. We're honored to be here with you to celebrate your achievements. And also joining us tonight are many of the program's former graduates. These alumni are true testaments to the program's success 
and we're pleased to welcome them back to help us celebrate this year's graduating class. I can't believe that some of you knew me 12 and 13 and 14 and 15 years ago, and you now have children and teenagers. That's how old I'm getting, and it's a testament to the success of this program. We're delighted to have you and your children and your families here with us this evening. It's a real honor, and it's, it's really a great pleasure to see you all. These alumni have participated in a day-long session to discuss the challenges they have faced and continue to face, lessons learned, and the future of museum training for Indigenous people in Canada. Ms. Jamison Brandt, Program Coordinator, will share some of the results with you a little later, but let me say now that the management and staff, many of whom are here this evening, are very, very proud of this program. Il s'agit d'un année très spéciale qui marque le 25e anniversaire du programme. Depuis un quart de siècle, le Musée canadien de l'histoire et le Musée canadien de la guerre ont le plaisir d'accueillir de des stagiaires de plus de 50 différentes communautés autochtones venues de tous les coins du Canada. Plus de 105 stagiaires ont fréquenté nos musées et nous avons eu le privilège de travailler avec chacun et chacun d'eux. Nous espérons que cette collaboration profondément enrichissante durera encore de nombreuses années. Le programme est unique et son genre au Canada. Il a été conçu pour que les Premières Nations, les Inuits et les Métis de toutes les régions du Canada puissent représenter leur histoire et leur culture en collaboration avec des établissements culturels. Nous sommes fiers de déclarer qu'il tient cet objectif. Il suffit de penser aux importantes réalisations des diplômes du programme pour en mesurer la réussite. Les diplômes sont devenus des modèles et d'art défenseurs des secteurs des musées et de la culture à l'échelle du pays et au-delà de nos frontières. J'aimerais nommer en particulier deux diplômes qui se trouvent aujourd'hui parmi nous. Last fall, John Hogan, a 2003 graduate, was honored with Heritage Award for his work on the conservation of a church on his reserve. He also contributed to having the Stein Valley considered for UNESCO World Heritage status. From the Naklamo Nation, Mr. Hogan has published on grasslands and rattlesnakes and co-facilitated the Naklamo Rock Art Conference. In addition, he has helped researchers within the Chinese Canadian community discover more about their early history within this territory and is working on a reconciliation monument to honor those early pioneers. Because of these efforts and many more, Mr. Hogan has gained a reputation as the go-to person in his community for anything related to language, genealogy, history, and tradition. I would also like to thank Penny Pine for joining us tonight. Following her graduation from the program in 2000, Ms. Pine worked in various capacities at this museum, eventually assuming her current role as Ethnology Collection Coordinator in 2001. During her 18 years with the museum, Ms. Pine has worked in preventative care of the Ethnology Collection for numerous internal and external exhibitions. She was also a past chair of the RBC Aboriginal Internship Steering Committee and has served as a mentor to many graduates of the program. We're saddened but happy for her that Penny has just announced her retirement after many, many years of faithful service to this institution. And we wish her all the best in the next chapter of her life, although we will miss her immensely. Thank you, Penny, and congratulations. Stand up, Penny, just for a second so people can... Je pourrais parler toute la soirée de l'élisation des diplômes du programme, mais je tiens aussi à préciser que les stagiaires ne sont pas les seuls bénéficiaires du programme. Le Musée canadien de l'histoire et le Musée canadien de la guerre ont grandement tiré profit de la collaboration avec les stagiaires. Nous avons bénéficié de leur connaissance intime de leur peuple et de leur tradition culturelle, et nous sommes reconnaissants des liens fractueux 
que le programme nous a aidé à tisser avec les communautés Métis et Inuit et avec les Premières Nations de tout le Canada, sans parler du professionnalisme, de l'enthousiasme et du savoir-faire des stagiaires. Chaque année, nous sommes impressionnés par le talent et l'éthique professionnelle des stagiaires du de programme. Et cette année ne fait pas exception. Having Vanessa Cake, Adrian Dokas, and Andrea Walkis in our midst has been a pleasure, not to mention a great help. Seeing their work here makes me confident that the crucial task of preserving and presenting Canada's diverse history is in very good hands. I'd like to take this opportunity to sincerely thank RBC for supporting this program through the partnership of the RBC Emerging Artist Project. Your work is critically important. This is the fourth year of their support for this program, and we are very grateful for their commitment. On that note, please help me welcome Ms. Tina Sarellis, Regional President, Ontario North and East, to the podium to say a few words. Tina. Thank you, uh, Mark, for that introduction. And thank you, Elder De Conte, for once again leading a very beautiful smudging ceremony that I've had the great pleasure of participating in for several years. And it's always so meaningful and, uh, and a great pleasure to be a part of. I'd also like to begin by acknowledging that the land on which we gather is the traditional and unceded territory of the Algonquin Nation. To acknowledge this traditional territory is to recognize its longer history, one that predates the earliest establishment of European colonies. And it's such an, a pleasure to join you once again to celebrate this special occasion. It's my third time, and as Mark acknowledged, RBC's fourth time mar marking this graduation. And what a special year it is, our 25th anniversary. RBC, we've been proud supporters of the museum for the past 23 years, and, uh, and this program for. And on behalf of the entire Royal Bank team, I'd like to congratulate each of the graduates, Vanessa, Adrian, and Andrea. It's uh, such an incredible accomplishment and one that you should be extremely proud of. I'd also like to give special acknowledgement to each of the alumni here. Some of you I've met and some of you uh, I'm seeing for the first time. Uh, your success is testimonial to this program's deep impact. Uh, so welcome. I understand there's over 20 of you here and it's wonderful to have you here. We're excited to continue our partnership with the Canadian Museum of History to bring the RBC Aboriginal Training Program in, in Museum Practices to life. In fact, uh, this program is the only one of its kind in Canada which provides First Nations, Métis and Inuit people from across Canada the opportunity to hone and broaden uh, skills in the various aspects of museum work and something that we're so proud to support. And over the years, as Mark acknowledged, under our Emerging Artist Project, we've uh, supported over 7,000 artists. So it's no surprise to learn that through your next visit to a museum or a night at the symphony or somewhere, uh, a place somewhere in Canada, uh, likely it's because of the work of a, or the performance of an emerging artist, a conductor, a curator, or a playwright. So we're so proud to support each and every one of them because it fosters a culture of diversity and inclusion that allows us to unleash the creativity that exists across our communities in Canada. I'd also like to share that this past year, in fact, in December, I had the great pleasure of, uh, of being a part of a, an inclusion activity. I had the honor of participating in the Kairos Blanket Exercise in nearby Tyendinaga Township. And it was such an eye-opening experience, a deeply moving experience for me. And as a leader within RBC, it was, I felt it was important that I participate along with our employees, most of which were part of Indigenous communities. And it opened my eyes to the importance of understanding, valuing, and respecting the unique voices and views of our Indigenous communities and their telling of our shared history. And that's why in pro programs such as this, the RBC Aboriginal Training Program in Museum Practices is so incredibly important. It strengthens the Indigenous voice in telling important stories through the arts, and we're here to listen and learn. 
For the students, a key strength of the program is in how it aims to close the gap between academic and professional uh, experiences through on-the-job training and apprenticeships. This is something that we've identified as RBC as so important through our RBC Future Launch program. Some of you may have heard about it or seen the recent um, ads. And it's about our commitment to helping young people prepare for the future of work by helping to remove barriers and provide access to young people to have hands-on work experience, to expand your networks, and to build 21st century skills. We invest in youth because when young people succeed, we believe we all succeed. And we also know that young people can't do it alone. Partnerships such as the one that we are experiencing here today helps move the needle. And we are particularly proud and thrilled to see how successful this program has been over the years. And, and we're pleased to partner uh, with, with the museum and create opportunities for students to embark on your career journeys. So on that note, I'd like to once again congratulate each of you on your accomplishments and wish you nothing but the best in your future endeavors. Thank you once again for including RBC. Thank you, Tina. Thank you again for the wonderful and very important support of RBC for this uh, great project. Thank you, those of you from Rivers Inlet and Dulcas for bringing this weather today, because it's the nicest day we've had since 2017. I can't thank those of you from Kitty Z because you have the same weather we have. And this, is, this is the nicest day we've had, so it's a lovely evening. Uh, enjoy it while you can. Uh, next, we'll hear from Jameson Brandt, uh, program coordinator of this program. It's thanks to her exceptional skill and dedication that this program is such a success. Thank you, Jameson, for your hard work this year and every year in which you've led the program and for your, your dedication and your commitment to this museum and to the issues that we deliver upon for Canadians. Please help me welcome Jameson Brandt. Bienvenue à tout, toutes et à tous. Nous sommes heureux de vous compter parmi nous ce soir pour célébrer la remise de diplôme de trois nouvelles professionnels des musées. C'est aussi un moment de choix pour célébrer le programme de formation en pratique muséale destiné aux autochtones qui offre des expériences de qualité aux autochtones désireux de travailler dans le domaine des institutions culturelles. For 25 years, the Canadian Museum of History has extended this immersive experiential opportunity to First Nations, Métis, and Inuit interested in working with their communities to create better understandings of Indigenous culture in Canada. Founded upon principles identified in the 1992 Task Force on Museums and First Peoples, the program set out to address findings related to its specific consultations on training. To quote the report, to work in established museums or to develop museums in their own communities, First Peoples need training in all phases of, muse phases of museology. More recent calls to action stemming from the findings from the 2015 Truth and Reconciliation Commission and Canada's 2016 endorsement of the United Nations Declaration on the Rights of Indigenous Peoples have underscored the importance of this and other initiatives undertaken by the museum over the past few decades. Dedi dedicated sections from both of these much deliberated documents reinforce that we are on the right track and doing our part to ensure that museums are consulting with, working alongside, and partnering, partnering with Indigenous peoples and communities. We're very proud of what we've been able to accomplish together. This year, with the help of our program sponsor, the RBC uh, Bank of Canada, we are celebrating the successful completion of three internships and acknowledging the achievements of a fourth intern who returned to her community of Inuvik in December. What can we say about another exciting training year? 
Well, it's been jam-packed with new experiences, extensive exposure to unknown aspects of everyday life in the museum field, and a team-building exercise likely to create professional bonds that will last a lifetime. Following the intensive orientation period, the interns quickly moved into training on the museum's artifact, library, and archival databases. Over the years, the program has learned that applying these skills to a community-focused research project is key to the interns' experience at museums. By combining knowledge of their home communities and cultures with museum technologies, they're able to retrieve and often build upon the museum's documentation of the collections. Vanessa com completed her project on Algonquin perspectives of the four seasons. She incorporated legends, knowledge about ethnobotany and ceremonies with a view to taking the associated stories back to her community's cultural center for public interpretive programming. Adrian researched Anishinaabe ceremonies and medicines by combining the teachings with related artifacts and reference materials in the collections. Marianne investigated Inuvialuit interactions with Alaskan Inupiat to produce a comprehensive report that will benefit both the people of Inuvik and the museum. Setting out to explore the museum's collection of Haltsik and Oikinu artifacts, Andrea located details of oral accounts, building upon oral histories she had heard from local elders in her own community. In addition, she investigated materials pertaining to the broader Kwakwakiwak history and culture. All of these were valuable projects and all helped immerse the interns into various applications used within the museum environment. Each was then mentored by a curator who led them through the research steps of the public exhibition of artifacts and affiliated messaging. They were directly involved in shaping development of exhibitions, either out on the floor or for upcoming projects. Examples of, include research for exhibition ideas, selection of artifacts and stories in the First People's Hall, documentation of historical accounts of shamanistic practices among the Inuvialuit, and textual context for the Grand Hall. Working alongside teams of dedicated professionals here at the on site at the, and at the Canadian War Museum and our partner institutions, the interns learned how to work with artifacts in the collections. They had hands-on experience in accessing, handling, moving, documenting, condition reporting, and properly storing materials. They also learned the importance of establishing and maintaining professional standards for environmental control and preventive conservation. The interns branched out further to pursue their individual interests, focusing on the archaeological collections, creative development, loans, and acquisition processes. This year, the museum also developed partnerships with Ingenium, the Canada Science and Technologies Corporation, the National Gallery of Canada, and the Canadian Museum of Nature. Representatives from these institutions welcomed the interns and supervised their five-week off-site training placements. This was a fantastic opportunity for the interns to spread their wings in different settings, and the feedback was very positive. We thank all of the staff who took the time and initiative and responsibility to help make these partnerships possible. Over the past seven years, the program has built a strong network of heritage contacts in Quebec. Our field trip to Quebec City, Windake, and, and Montreal was an important part of the training, during which the interns were introduced to new facilities and professional contacts. This gave them different perspective on cultural preservation and exposed them to some of the oldest collections in North America. In the past few weeks, the interns gained experience in the areas of information and records management, public programming, the visitor experience, and exhibition preparation. We attribute the success of these training placements to all those who supervise the interns. We also rely on staff, colleagues, 
professional contacts, and representatives from the local Indigenous service agencies in the National Capital Region to supplement the training year with specialized presentations. They also offer tours, workshops, and activities. For those of you with us here today, we thank you for your part in developing future Indigenous cultural leaders. Without you, we would not have a program of this caliber, complete with all the qualities necessary to ensure another productive year. I just want to take a, a moment now to uh, talk about today's activities and what happened with the gathering of alumni from across the country. We were happy to have people coming in all the way from British Columbia to join us here today and uh, from various parts of the country. It was just a, a, a really meaningful gathering. Um, I think people uh, are starting to come to realize that the museum field is quite new for Indigenous people and we're just sort of breaking through in this generation uh, to develop our, our skills and start to do our own cultural preservation. So we asked some of the, some of the we, we asked the alumni some uh, important questions to help us make our decisions on how to move forward and uh, they shared their insight about the things that they see as valued priorities and challenges. And we know now uh, that there, there will be a big push for repatriation and for uh, us to uh, educate our own people in our own communities and skills alongside the professionals and technicians in order to make these things happen. We also heard that um, it's important that we give indigenous people our own voice and that our indigenous people assume their own voice take on the confidence to do so. We heard that it's very important to consider the work of women in all of the deliberations and negotiations that happen in matters pertaining to culture. We heard about technology and uh, the, the need for our languages which are so quickly on uh, you know, a concern we learned the need to take the technology and, and run with it, uh, make applications that will help us provide uh, language learning programs for our children, uh, sound recordings that, so we can revive some of our uh, older songs. And so these are some of the valued uh, um, statements that were made today. We talked about networking and building a greater networking, building our capacity and not just hanging on to that for a little while, but making sure in our communities that that, that capacity is actually uh, nurtured and, and, and able to grow in the future. We also talked about uh, the, the working with the elders and involving them in, in programs that include youth so that we can get uh, on with the business of passing on our traditional knowledge. So at this time, elders, distinguished guests, colleagues, and friends, it's now time to call upon each of the interns to present them with their certificates. We'll start with Andrea. Andrea Walkis is Helsuk, Wikanu, from the small remote community village of Wikanu Village, R Rivers Inlet, British Columbia. Raised with the oral narratives of her people and having served as an elder's assistant, Andrea set out to investigate ceremonial objects and their stories in order to help her community establish a cultural center. Andrea demonstrated meticulous, thoughtful, and detailed care in all the works she contributed to. She knows how to stay strong and keep smiling. Nika Kishkogwe, 
Adrian Dokis is from Dokis First Nation, Ontario. As coordinator of her community's new museum, she set out to learn more about daily operations of a small museum, management and research specifically associated with repatriation, and how to care for a prospective incoming archaeological collection. Adrian reflected the gentle nature of the family and community she represents. And it's good to see you all here today. She was inquisitive and approached her projects with balance and patience. Just as her traditional name suggests, she will go on to shed light for days to come in her new role in her community. Vanessa. <laughs> Vanessa Cake. I said Vanessa Cake is a member of the Kitigan Zibi Anishinaabe First Nation. Work at the cultural center in her community sparked a passion to focus on collections, conservation, and public programming. Whoa, we had had fun with Vanessa. <laughs> I think everybody can, who knows her can uh, agree, attest to that. She was well received and uh, had wonderful reviews in her training placements, projects, and activities. I think everyone will remember her just as well for her contagious laughter and the uh, inspiration she inspires. Vanessa was, is well read, particularly in scientific subject matter and took naturally to developing ideas and messages related to public programming. We'll miss her thirst for knowledge and her fearless leaps into every project. So I'm going to call up uh, the interns one by one, uh, ask them if they want to share a few words with you uh, regarding their experience. Andrea? Hello. First of all, I'd like to thank the RBC for, for sponsoring this program and Jameson for her tireless work. It's uh, been amazing to see her dedication. And um, I'd like to thank these lovely ladies over here who I've spent this year with and all my supervisors. It's been amazing to learn from you. Um, yes, <laughs> thank you. Adrian? Hi, I would just like to say thank you to um, uh, everybody that came out tonight. Um, I would like to say thank you to my partner and my son, <laughs> they're over there, um, for moving out here with me. It made um, my time out here a lot easier. I would like to say thank you to my family um, for coming to visit, um, moving us out here, supporting us, and coming to visit pretty much every month. Um, my community for telling me about the program and kind of pushing me to come out here and 
take this opportunity so I can bring it back home to our museum. Um, it means a lot that you guys all came. <laughs> um, thank you to the History Museum and everybody I worked with um, for, um, for just taking me on to your, and giving me, helping me when I needed it, um, giving just your teachings um, and bringing me on to your teams and your own projects. Um, and I would also like to say thank you to my interns, my friends. <laughs> uh, you guys definitely made it a lot easier. <laughs> Thanks for the laughs and the help. Um, and I can't wait to come and visit you guys in your own communities. <laughs> All right, thank you. Vanessa? Well, nothing says no pressure like going last. Hi, I want to start off by saying thank you to RBC as well for the amazing support to this program and to Jameson for her support of the interns. A huge thank you to the interns. These are amazing women who have been by my side through ups and downs. Love them. And I want to say thank you to this institution as a whole because it has given me confidence in myself, which I cannot thank them enough for the teachings and the understandings I now have of myself, my culture, my community, it's outstanding. And I can't put into words the thanks that I owe this institution and everybody who taught me and took the time to mentor me. So thank you. I may not have worked with everybody, but everybody took time to teach me something. And for that, I'm so thankful. So, kichini guach. Have a wonderful night. So ladies and gentlemen, please join us in congratulating the 2017 graduates from the RBC Aboriginal Training Program in Museum Practices. Merci d'avoir vu être joint à nous aujourd'hui pour célébrer le programme et encourager Andrea, Adrian et Vanessa à s'engager avec confiance dans leur rôle professionnel. Ensemble, nous encourageons chacun et chacune des stagiaires qui ont franchi nos pas pour assurer la préservation culturelle dans une expérience de sagesse tranquille et de considération envers les générations à venir. Antonio Tonghawk, né en Guatnegura. So we're going to call everyone up now for a group photo uh, to our Thank you, Jameson. Uh, before I conclude, let's congratulate our interns one more time. This is a very demanding program. You met every challenge with hard work and enthusiasm. And I also happen to believe uh, very deeply that this program is a testament 
to how Indigenous communities and museums can work together in a very collaborative way on behalf of Canadians. Félicitations pour cette réussite remarquable et bien méritée. Nous suivrons vos progrès au cours des années à venir et nous vous souhaitons beaucoup de succès. Je suis convaincu que si vous abordez toutes vos futures entreprises avec l'esprit et le talent dont vous avez fait preuve ici, rien ne sera vous arrêté. And I believe we have a performance, Francine. Help me welcome Crystal Beanie John to the stage. Right? Where is Crystal? There we are. Thank you very much.
Let's give it up one more time for Crystal. <laughs> Thank you very much. I just told Elder DeConti I can't even skip rope watching that, my God. Uh, thank you very much, that was fantastic.